This is the Spirited Talk podcast. Stories and conversations about connecting with your friends and loved ones in the spirit world. With over 20 years of study and practice as a medium, here's the host of the show, Trevor. Ladies and gentlemen, today's guest and new friend, Mr. Jason Goldsworthy. You actually, while you're doing the reading, think you're making it up. There's nothing to tell you you're not. It's your own imagination. And then you find out you're given incredible validating evidence from the other side. You are then left thinking, how did I do that? What is the magic behind that? What is the science? And that's something that so many of us, especially I think the men, try to grasp is what is the mechanics of this? Why is this possible that they can influence my brain in such a way? So thank you for putting that to me in that way. So you then had to cough up a a few hundred pound and make that big long trip over to the Arthur Finley College. What was the year and what was the course? 2009, it was in March... And I think it was the Dutch course put on by Jose Goskolt, Paul Jacobs. That was the first first um, course I, I went to. Well, I arrived there in the college and I thought it was, it felt like I was coming home. And I thought to myself, I'm coming into this new spiritual community. And um, I thought I'm going to be meeting all these people that are like me. But when I came in there, Trevor, I thought, I'm a beginner, me. I'm I'm a beginner. That's what I felt in myself. I'd obviously done a few weekend courses, but when they asked me on the form to fill in what I wanted, I put myself down as a beginner. But when I got there, I found I was put in with the intermediates. And the reason because of that, they said to me, because the mediumship was just under my skin, they said. That's what they said. It's just under your skin. All you need to do is to open it up. I didn't realise then, but I remember going into the classroom with Janet Parker. It was the first time I was there. And she said, Jason, could you get me that whiteboard, please? And I said, yeah, sure. Got the whiteboard, put it up on the stage, large lounge, I believe it was. It was a large lounge. I think it was large lounge. Put it up there on the stage. And she said, while you're here, get us a link. Mm-hmm. And everyone started laughing. And I said, and I said, oh, but um, I've never done a link like this. She said, but you've got a connection with the spirit world. You've done this before. Yeah, I've done it on one-to-one. And she said, no, but just get a link for the for the, for the the group. So I got this link for the group. And I was like, you know, getting all this information. And lo and behold, nobody could take it. And I said, I said to my, yes, I've proved to myself I'm not a medium. So I said to her, I'm doing a bad job for me. I'm a bad job for the spirit world. I said to her, done. And she said to me, just slow down there. Actually, you do have a link with the spirit world. Let's just rewind it. You gave too much information, she said. I didn't have a true I didn't have a clue about delivery. She said, slow it down. So I slowed it down, I gave it bit by bit, and before I knew it, I had two people that could take the information. And then she said, feel where you want to go. So I was feeling where I wanted to go, and um I think I want to go over here, but suddenly I felt a pull over here. I said, Well, I'm coming to this lady. And then suddenly I felt the energy of spirit coming through me and I thought, whoa, this is good. And then suddenly the information started to become more and more correct and more and more what you might call evidential. But that experience, I'll never forget it, how I didn't realise that this is how demonstrating mediumship would work. And before I knew it, I was so scared that first time getting up to demonstrate. I think I got up 15 times to demonstrate after that. I couldn't get enough of it. It was like I really needed to get up and do this demonstrate. I didn't know why. I didn't know why. It was like, it like something had opened within me that just loved standing up and getting contact for the spirit world back then but I know that week I would my name would get called out oh Jason can you come up to the bit and one time I'm standing up in front of 80 people back then and I'm getting some information oh Jason don't worry we'll do this with you and lo and behold they could understand the information and it worked and me myself like you was thinking well I'm investigating this. How can it work? I need to know how it works. And that's why I kept going back, because I needed to know. 
exactly how mediumship worked. I remember on my first course, I was uh, went on one of the Eileen Davis courses. Lovely. We went in the first class. It was one of the early classes with Eileen in one of the rooms overlooking the lawn, a nice one of the big tutor rooms. And I remember Eileen saying, well, we're going to let's just see where we are with you all. We're going to invite you up one at a time to see what your abilities are. And at that point, my confidence was, I don't know, I'll, I'll give it a go. We're all here to learn. That's not a big deal. And anyway, Eileen said, Claire, would you come up and do a demonstration for us? This young girl, as she was then, stepped onto the podium, the little stage, and she did a reading. And as she's doing this reading, it's absolutely incredible. Possibly one of the best I've ever seen in my life. She flowed. She didn't stop talking. It was bang, 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 bang. Everything was evidential. And I was in my seat and I was slowly, slowly sinking lower and lower. I thought, I do not want to go out that front. This girl is a genius. Now, that girl turned out as Claire Edwards, who's been interviewed on Spirited Talk. And she's one of the few ladies that actually has a DSNU in this subject and has taken it uh, quite a lot further. An incredible medium. But, Jason, the reason I'm saying that is there's this thing when you get to the college that it's kind of you jump ponds as I call it at home you're a big fish in a little pond you're in your neighborhood you're the only medium you're the medium that can show off and know Mm. everything but when you go to the Arthur Finley College you swap being a big fish you become a little fish in a big pond Mm. and it's all about learning and it's all the only good thing is those fish are all friendly so absolutely and how did you get on with old Paul oh he I'm sure he whipped me into shape um, Trevor, as you know, um, he's mellowed out. I must say, he I'm has not mellowed much. out. And I hope, if he's listening, I, I do love Paul and the way the way he teaches. But back then, in his younger years, he used to whip people into shape. And you know, I actually it could be painful at times, but I must say, I had so much respect for the amount of. I think it's just. Uh, knowledge that I received but also we used to call him and and uh, we used to call him the the mechanic because what he does on the first day he takes you all apart and you think I can't do anything and then the next day he starts to put you back together and by the third day you're like oh it's start my mediumship starting to get better now and on the fourth day when you've got to demonstrate you think wow it's all working and it's like he works in such a way, and if it is that that you just you learn so much, it's like he he mechanically helps you into a certain aspect, like how to go direct, how not to go direct, and all these sort of things. And just when you think I've got it under the knee, he can set the bar a lot higher. Oh yes, <laughs> um, and that's that's Paul for you. Let's put it that way. Um, He's not for the faint-hearted. No, absolutely not. In fact, that's why he's not been on Spirited Talk, because he scares me. <laughs> because it's, 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 oh, but I must say, I've seen him since years, because like, like, like I said, I mean, this is back in 2008, 2009, but now he's much mellowed out a lot, really. I- and, and over the years, you then went back there several times. And, and in, in your uh, conversations with me before this interview, you mentioned also Eamon Downey. Yes. After doing, you know, three years with Jose Goskalk in the Academy of Mediumship and also going back to the college, I think, so many times. Sometimes I went three times a year. But my wife was a bit, because uh, we were talking about the money, she said, do you know how much is this all mm. costing? And I said to her, I said, don't worry, the spirit world will provide. So what I did, I was doing my healings and my little intuitive talks to people and asking them to donate money into my piggy bank. And the first year, the spirit world managed to pay for my first courses. The second year, they paid for the courses, the flight and everything. And then the third year, I managed to pay everything that I needed and all my training and everything I've done in this spiritual has been paid by the spiritual world. And that's how I could say to her, look, it's not coming out of our bank. It's OK. I'll be able to do it this way. And that's how we did it. But then when I met Eamon Downey, it was after I'd been through all that. Eamon Downey was on Polishing the Professional and the Science Week with Eamon Downey. And both of those weeks were fantastic. I did the Polishing the Professional twice with him and I did the Science Week with him. Because I love the scientific aspect of it. But I must say, Eamon Downey could look at you and and he he could just help mould you what what needed. If there was anything that needed to be put into its place, he had a way of 
showing you the best aspect of yourself and mm-hmm. your mediumship. And I was very, very proud to be a part of, of those those courses, uh, Trevor. I think it was the last course I went on at Arthur Finley 2015, so I'm overdue a trip. But Eamon was one of the other teachers. Now, I was with Sandy Baker's uh, group of people, but I went to a few of the Eamon lectures in the evenings, you know, when everybody's done a pub. And I also went to his Sunday service that he did. And that's mm. when I first found out the true Eamon Downey. He is a truly remarkable medium. When he stood in that sanctuary there and he did his readings, it was like he had a directory. It was like he knew that it was like, this is your life from years ago. I forgot his name now, Heyman. Oh, yeah, I know. (laughs) I know what you mean. I'll probably get it wrong. Larry Grayson? I don't know. No, it it was somebody called Eamon, actually. I can't remember. Eamon Andrews. Eamon Eamon Andrews. Andrews, Yeah. This is your life. This is your life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Eamon was doing this, our Eamon, and he was doing these readings in the sanctuary. And it was like that. It's like he had a book and he was reading it. He was remarkable. And I totally agree with you. His scientific approach to this is so comforting for us mechanically minded people that want to know a little bit more. So I have huge respect for that man. Wonderful man. Unfortunately, he didn't spend a lot of time in the UK at these days. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think he is. Is he, uh, Trevor? Uh, no, he's mainly in America uh, these yeah. days. So listen, we've been we've been talking about you going to the college as just one of the humble students there, but inside you, you wanted to get more from it. And, and I believe you took on the Spiritualist National Union qualifications. Tell us about that, please. Years ago, I, I think when I, when I was going to the college, I've always been a Spiritualist National member because when I went to the, that college, not only did it change me as a person, because like you know, my background was Catholic, but Really, there was a spiritualist in my soul waiting to get out. I think that's one way of putting it. Because when I when I got in touch with the college, I said, I really need... And I was so happy that there were these seven principles that could fit into my life. And mediumship was accepted. So I was so happy. So I, I did that back then. But So I thought, I have to do my certificate. There was something in me that really wanted to know more about the history, know about where spiritualism started, um, learn about. So I was so happy to go through the program, doing my SD1 and SD2 and SD4 and all that, because it's all all these things. We're learning different aspects about the mediumship and also about the, the speaking uh, mediumship. And really, I've always been someone, Trevor, that if I was going to do something, I was going to do it properly. And for me, doing the qualification was to do the job what that I that you do for spirit properly. So if I was going to be a speaker, I was going to be the best speaker I could be. And if I was going to be a medium, I was going to do it to the best of my ability. So going through that program really stretched me to do it. And one time they asked me a question, said, could you say there's something in changed in you in doing your CSNU? I said, yeah, there's a spark within me that is very proud to be actually working in this way. I had a moment at the Barbanel Centre when I I actually did very well to get my pass. I just felt the the spirit world there, the proudness, and I just felt, yeah, this is really, um, this is definitely the route I need to go. Definitely the route I need to go. Um, So when I got back from Canada one year, I went to Bristol very quickly to do my CSNU, half jet, jet lagged, by the way, and I got there and I did it, and it was just, What I was amazed that even in an examination point, perfect communication could happen that was good enough to come through. And I was always and always am amazed at the spirit, what the spirit world bring. That was brilliantly put across. Can you now blow your own trumpet? Tell us what qualifications you've got. I've got my CSNU in speaking. I've got my CSNU in demonstrating. So which I'm very proud to have achieved. I'm currently working on certain aspects to try and get the the CSNUT. This backs up a question that's often asked me is, why do I tend to choose mediums and guests that have qualifications? I'm not trying to give you or those with the qualifications some kind of status that isn't deserved, but the discipline that comes from the mediums that have been through that SNU system is Mm. so superior to the layman that hasn't. Does that make sense? It does. I know a lot of mediums that have gone through this system, and it's good to have a quality and be guided towards a certain quality of mediumship 
and whether that's demonstrating or speaking, it's lovely to have that quality. And so I'm very thankful to the, the Spiritualist National Union for, for doing this. It's, it does raise the standards of mediumship, really does. And this is now something that you can use and take on because you are very much into teaching these days. Yes, I am. I actually have my own centre here in Lager. I have had in the past, well, many Dutch students visit me my friend in Canada and different people from Holland in that way I have worked in in different places that I never would have dreamt of I would be and one time I've been to Sweden and one time I got asked to teach in Finland so working with people with different languages and I must say it's been a fascinating journey Trevor that is really 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 wonderful so at the moment I have quite a busy center and, and now with this situation going on in the world everything's gone online so um, I have people from different from Australia to USA to Canada and it's so I must say it's it's so wonderful to be able to connect with people and inspire people from so many different countries. We are now going to do the three yes no questions. Now this comes at the end of every interview from here on in and all it simply is is I will ask Jason three questions He has no time to think about it. He has to answer yes or no. Simple as that, and we move on. So we're going to do that right now. Three straight questions, three straight answers. Yes or no? And it's just as simple as that. You're going to get three very quick questions, and I'm not really going to give you a great deal of thinking time on this, Jason. What I need you to do is just say yes or no at the end of the question. But are you ready for the yes-no challenge, Jason? I am ready. Number one, do you believe mediums are born gifted? Yes. Number two, do you believe you had a previous life before this one? Yes. Number three, would you be prepared to have your mediumship tested under scientific conditions? Yes. Wow. Three yeses. There we go. That's the first time that's ever been done on the Spirit to Talk podcast. Jason Goldsworthy was the first. Three yeses in a row. Wow. Brilliant. And there we go. Thank you very much, Jason, for those answers. And I know that you want to actually expand on those. You've just said to me, You said, well, hang on a minute. Can I just expand on that? So the first question that I ask you is, do you believe mediums are born gifted? You were very, very quick to say yes. Well, I'd like you to explain that. What I feel is mediums, they have a gift and I believe they're born that way. I believe it's in their DNA, it's in their blood, it's in their soul. Um, And I just feel that mediums, they go through an awakening through life. I've met mediums that have said that they've been been aware of spirit as a child. So they've been basically opening up through their lifetime. Like me, my, my experience was as a child, being aware of the imaginary friend and that sort of thing, it opened up. I believe it's always been in me and it's always been there. And all it needs is that nurturing to actually come out and to be if you get into a a mediumship circle or a a spiritualist church circle where you can actually start to nurture your gift and bring it out then you find out hey there's a gift there Um, but if you do nothing with that gift it's like playing the piano Trevor if you you might have a gift for playing the piano but if you never take a lesson you're only going to be playing chopsticks and it's the same with mediumship they you could have a talent but if you don't train it that little bit you're not going to be moving into something else so yes I do believe mediums are are born gifted I believe it's in their DNA that's what I feel but there are more people in the world that have this gift but they're not aware of it Mm -hmm. and like playing football you could look at it this way not everyone's going to be a top scorer for the best football team in the world so you know we have a certain degree of talent and a certain degree of training that's needed to nurture this and to bring it out, if you understand what I mean. Those that have uh, have listened to the very recent interview I did with uh, Mr Andy Bing will know that when I ask him the very same question, he categorically stood by it. It was after Andy's explanation, and yours on top of that now, that's validated that further, that actually I'm now going to change my point of view about being born gifted and I can now see what you're all saying yes we are born with a gift 
in a sense, we could be as bold as to say everybody's born with the same gift, but not everybody brings it out. If we look at the lovely Mavis Patilla, I believe she was born gifted, but after her accident and scrave with death, after then the spirit world opened up to her. So there was an incident that was needed to activate that part of her mediumship. So for you at 40 years old, there may have had to be a certain of influence of spirit at one time that suddenly opened you up to your gifts and that sort of thing. So I just feel that people that do come into this and we can say, oh, these people are gifted and these people are learnt mediumship. I believe the gift needs to be nurtured. And in that way, then you find out what sort of gift you have. Because mm. you might be the sort of medium that is good at psychic readings, but you're not very good at communicating with the spirit world. Mm. Well, to find out how strong that gift is, that's why these churches and spiritual centres are so needed to help people nurture and learn their gifts. And obviously the Arthur Finley College and going on to, to, to do studies within it is, is, is a lovely way of finding out how how good is that gift and what can you do with it? Yeah, it's interesting. One of the aspects of your mediumship that you are very proud of is actually your clairvoyance. And I was talking to you before the interview in our test day. I was talking about this and I asked if I could question you on this because you were quite or are quite adamant on your website and you strongly say that you bring forward proof of the continuation of life and you use that as a quite a bold statement explain a bit to me well you imagine where i've came from and we go back to the edgy etheric arthur finley's book where he was in search of proof for me it was the same i, I had to go in search of proof and and it was like there has to be some sort of yeah intelligence from the spirit world that can bring back a memory or proof in such a way that people would say, oh, that's that's exactly how that person was. You know, we could say, okay, you bring, you bring forward a father and you bring forward, okay, he was wearing a suit and this sort of thing. That's all very nice. But what did he love to do? And it's not, it's, it's a combination of not just evidence of how somebody was what sort of hobby or work they did but also that emotional evidence of how was the relationship and what were those memories that were spent together those sort of memories so when I talk about proof it's not just evidential proof that you can just pick up like names and street addresses and stuff like that not that you know that happens all the time but you can pick up that sort of information but it's like getting that information that is really like it's something that you that could that the only the sitter could know that that happened. That and that's and that's what I mean with that evidential mediumship, because in my area there was a, a lot of mediums that just you know they'll basically just give oh, I've got a motherly feeling here, give you uh, some flowers and 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 uh, and you get a hug, and so it's not really proving the spirit world but for me it was very important to first prove the spirit world to myself you know, on my journey and then once I could prove myself with the evidence then I could say to the sitter okay now I can bring you the emotional message if I was going to give you an emotional message today Trevor I'd like to first prove that I have some sort of connection first before I did that you know it's interesting you say that because one of the areas of my growth that's given me my truth, if you like, and my understanding of what is proof has happened during my own meditations, my own seekings in my own time, when mm. I've heard from my father and my mother, and they've given me evidence that I know I could not have known. And, and you had it with your brother and, and mm. uh, things like that, which are fantastic validations. And yeah, absolutely. It was for me on my journey... I was like, uh, when I first started, like I said, at the Arthur Finley, I was like, I need to give 10 pieces of evidence that are correct before I believed I had a good contact with the spirit world. And that's how I, how strict I was with myself. These days, I'm more, I'm more lenient with myself 
thank God, because I think I was my worst, worst teacher, really. I used to be a fax machine of information, um, but and that's just through my development. And then later, the emotional side of the of of the spirit would come through. So I'd be like, okay, I can give a few bits of evidence, and then when, then I would believe that little bit quicker. And it was learning. The spirit world was teaching me at the same time. Like just today, I gave a reading, and I was talking about uh, a bird that was uh, around this lady. Um, you know, and and I just I know that bird's been around you you since the day it looks like a red bird. It's been around you ever since the day that that this person has passed, and she was the tears started to come down her cheek, and I thought, and and you wouldn't think much of the of the evidence, but for her that red bird ended up around the funeral. On she said it was everywhere. It was around the funeral. It was on the headstone. It was around. It was twirling around, and ever since that day. It's turned up every day in the garden. Mm -hmm. And you're like, those, that sort of thing. You think, wow, isn't spirit amazing? Mm. The subtle things that they can bring, that bring uh, like a truth of continuous life. Isn't that a wonderful thing? It's remarkable. And, and the point is they can't use an iPhone. They can't use the common things that we use, but they have an incredible way of using what we've already got to communicate with us. The challenge is that our ears or our feelings have to be open to receive it, but you are absolutely right there, Jason. Spirited Talk and the Podcast Playlist are free podcasts. If you would like to make a financial contribution to the project, please visit our patron page at spiritedtalkpodcast.com and Spirited Talk Podcast is all one word. Thank you. Hello, I'm Joanne Galloway from Carlisle in Cumbria in the UK. I'm a partner in Spirited Talk Podcast. I find it very inspiring. And I also listen to Spirited Talk Podcasts when I'm doing my housework. You're listening to the Spirited Talk Podcast. Subscribe now to be part of the growing community. Go on, your spirit knows it's right. Jason, you don't escape the author's question, but he's actually got 10 questions and it's up to you to give me a number between one and 10. And just for any listeners that have put in their entries to this on Facebook, yes, they are programmed in and Arthur will tell us if your question has been chosen. So don't worry, listen in. Do you agree to answer these questions honestly? I do. Let's do it then. Arthur's got 10 questions, 1 to 10. Choose a number for me, Jay. Five. Number five. Here we go. Here is your chosen question. Question five. What can you least resist? Oh, nice one. Oh, I would say salt and vinegar crisps. Really? Yes. Love them. Love them. It's like when I'm sitting down watching watching uh, the television with my wife, salt and vinegar crisps and a cup of tea. I don't know why. That combination always stays with me my whole life. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that. And thank you, Arthur, for that question. Let's get back to the story. That third question was, would you be prepared to have your mediumship tested under scientific conditions? And without even taking a breath, you answered yes again. Tell me a little bit about that. And I believe you've got a story to share. Well, absolutely, I would. And the reason being me wanting to investigate mediumship, I wanted to know how it works. So obviously I was on the Science Week where Chris Rowe was on the Science Week and he actually managed to atta attach some sort of apparatus to our head while we were making a connection with the spirit world. And he could take measurements and find that we were in different states of consciousness. And that really intrigued me because I was like, OK, so this is a sort of like proof that we that we as mediums can have this contact with the spirit world and all have the same sort of things happening. Every student that he measured on that week would would get some sort of measurements from it and they put it together in a study of findings, what they call findings on mediumship. So I really enjoyed that aspect. I must say, since then, I've managed to have my myself measured by an awakened mind coach, which uh, originates out of America, where they actually measure consciousness. And they put different probes on your head and they can sort of measure uh, where your consciousness goes. And apparently what they understand with mediumship is we shift our mind 
into the alpha state, but then we shift just that little de de deeper to the theta state. And I thought that was amazing because the information comes from the Brit, what they call the alpha bridge into the, into our mental mind with as beta. And so being on the science week and listening to this, I thought it was fascinating. And getting myself measured in the in this way, I thought it's also fascinating to know that they found out that normally when people close their eyes, they go automatically to the alpha state. But when she put them on probes on my head, with my eyes open, I was already in the alpha state. So she said, well, that doesn't surprise me because you work a lot as a medium. So it was really interesting to find that out. And really, I would love um, to continue working alongside science in this way. And I wouldn't mind really investigating or being tested under scientific uh, conditions at all. Because ever since the beginning of mediumship, it's always been working alongside with science. And I feel that if we want to go forward with this... It really does need to be working alongside in that way, because when you think about it, scientists used to watch those old, uh, the old mediums in the old days, and that's how they invented the radio, because they were trying to create something that did, mediums did back in the day. So radio waves, they thought, might have been the same way that mediums communicate, and that's how our technology was influenced through mediums sharing and with science together. And I think that's really the way forward, Trevor. I just want to explain, in case anybody's new to their own studies, there's always a confusion at the very beginning when you start to understand the states of the mind. And it's because they're a little bit backward. Our general state of being, how I am now with Jason, how Jason probably is with me at the moment, is what's known as the beta state. It's the ordinary conscious levels that we're in. And when we then quieten it down, we, we, we let our mind still and we start focusing on single things and allowing everything else to go out of our mind, our mind slowly moves into the alpha state. So it's not what people think, which is start alpha, then go beta. It's actually start beta and then move to the alpha state. And the alpha state, as, as Jason's just said here, is where it all starts to kick off effectively. And if you're one of those that, that fall asleep uh, during a meditation, I like you to think of that as success because you've moved into the theta state, but you've just not totally controlled it. So it, it's pretty, pretty good. It's finding that fine, that fine medium between because when you're sit, what you say, sitting in the power meditation, which I love to do, and I do it all, every day at the moment because I've challenged myself to this 30 day challenge of sitting in the power. And I used to do that with my development years ago. But there are those moments now and again, it happens to all of us where you just suddenly fall asleep. Say, oh, I've gone too far. I've gone into that nothingness. I've suddenly felt that I've fallen asleep and that is it is really that what you're saying you're touching the theta but it's then just finding that fine medium in between where you can say still stay conscious of the energy within your body and that connection to your soul's energy and the spirit world around you and in that way that's when you're really activating the power the way it should be it's it's, it's wonderful to do and absolutely, the best messages or thoughts that people get, and my partner, who is not a spiritualist, does this all the time. She's just nodding off to sleep, and then she'll suddenly go, oh, my God, you'll never believe what I've just seen. And I recognise that she was going into that state of freedom, basically, that state where her mind was open to another communication. Thank you very much for explaining that. Now, we mentioned earlier on, Jason, yet you've obviously taken on this training and you've you've got yourself qualified. There you are in Lager, that beautiful country town in Germany, near the border to Netherlands, where those nutty people live. But now you said you've got your own centre, your own academy, if you like. Tell me all about that, because there are people around, especially the Netherlands listeners, that will be interested to find out a little bit more about this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've had my centre for quite many years. I started teaching teaching people how to do healing in the beginning and it moved into intuition and it's a lovely center in Lager where I teach mediumship to the highest level possible. I stick to what I've learned over the years because that was my reason for going back to England was to learn a mediumship at the highest level I could from the best tutors that I could find in the world so that I could get a really good understanding of it and what I noticed about teaching mediumship is that really 
every student is different. You have some people that can feel, you have some people that can see, and you have some people that just know, and also some people that can hear. And in these ways, because mediums are different, just like people, I find that it's wonderful to really uh, teach all different types of students that are, that bring through mediumship in different ways, to teach them how to believe in their gifts. And so that's what I do at my centre. But now I do it online through, you know, you can contact me via www.jasongoldsworthy.com or info at jasongoldsworthy.com. And I put on an online mentorship because what I wanted to do in one year was whatever level students were at, to help them believe in their mediumship where it didn't matter whether they, whether they were a seer or a listener or a hearer or a knower that I could help them personally in a smaller group setting where they could get through and and really improve and it's been amazing having these groups of people from different countries join me on this mentorship and I feel so proud to say that so that most of them in the year have really reached a lovely level of mediumship and a good understanding of mediumship because I feel it's very important for students to have this good foundation where they understand how their mediumship works not how my mediumship works and that's the difference um, because I could be trying to teach everyone to be a seer but not everyone's going to see spirit so it's learning for people to open it. And I think one of my greatest talents in teaching is I can teach confidence and in, in the way I nurture people to believe in their own gifts. Um, so you can't really, some people say you can't teach confidence, but it's about nurturing that, that gift in yourself. I have a new mentorship starting in June. If everyone's interested, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, wherever and I, I like connecting with spiritually minded people feel free to to join me on any of those things and I also have uh, something that I've started up for people that are just starting their new businesses in mediumship or spirituality it's on my website it's called the magic recipe because I used to be a chef and what we were talking about is to give people the ingredients to have a success within their spiritual practice. So me and my wife together have combined this together and it's starting in March. I think one of my greatest things and, and greatest things I love is to inspire people and students to be the best version of themselves. This is about the time that I should say that Jason is a member of the Friends of Spirit to Talk group. So if you feel you want to give him a question directly on Facebook, please do he's there he can answer your questions and in fact it's a very good way of doing it because that educates everybody else in the group well also i do a lot of free stuff trevor i do put a lot of free stuff on youtube i do a lot of services in different places and different churches so if people wanted to join me uh, to do free stuff i'd say check out my youtube channel as well because that's my way of giving back to people that really need it you know oh, bless you thank you very much for that there's something i need to mention before we do wrap this up also jason i'm aware of what's in the background on the cameras that we're using here now i'm also aware from what you've told us that ursula plays a key role in your life she's a nutty netherlander or dutch person and i would guess she must be shamanic in her ways <laughs> ah you're seeing you're seeing this um the dream well, this culture. is actually from my canadian friends and it's a, a dream catcher that was actually made through three ladies from Canada they made it together as a gift uh, because I'd been to visit them and I just I was I felt so blessed to receive this in the post and it's just wonderful how they've included included the eagles in there the feathers and they wove it themselves every little thing and everything little aspect of it that was put into care and crystals and stuff like that. But that shamanic influence would be um, through my friend Nicole Powell and um, her circle, I must say. And I, I must say, Trevor, going to Canada certainly has opened me up to a shamanic side of spirit, you know? Um, and I really, I really enjoyed that, that, a wonderful aspect 
that I'm sure you'd like to investigate one day. I kind of am doing it now. I mean, I started off with Maureen a few weeks back, as you know, Maureen Mernon in the last season. And Maureen is the most beautiful lady. And her understanding and the way she helped me understand and the listener understand her shamanism is absolutely fantastic. And actually, I must say, Jason, I was listening to, as I I said to you uh, in private conversation a short while ago, I was listening to Nick... Nicole Powell. I was listening to Nicole Powell's interview with our friend uh, Ruth. Sparkyella. And I was listening to it last night and she said, I am not, I'm not big enough to call myself a shaman, but I do believe in the shamanic ways. And it, it was words to that effect. And I thought that was a very good way of saying it. We don't have to fully go out and be committed to, you know, sweeping the path in front of us and that level, but we can just be influenced by some of the things. Yes. And it's because Nicole has grown up in that area that where Nicole lives, uh, the chief just lives down the road of the Cowichan tribes. And I've sat, sat in ceremonies, amazing ceremonies, that I was invited to by the what they call the elders there of the, of the clan. There. And I felt honoured to be a part of it. And I feel that when you have respect for, for the First Nations and in that area, you, you would never call yourself a shaman. You would only call yourself someone that was learning for... A shaman is someone that actually is living it, breathing it, and in a community of it. And that's how they feel about it in, in, in Canada. But I've I've met with some very wise people in the Cowichan tribe, and I've I've met um some wonderful carvers of the totem poles and I've seen them being how they've been carved. Uh, the feel of it is it's amazing. It's a it's a part of spirituality that is just oozing out of that culture it needs to be well respected so i I can really respect nicole's words in saying uh, i am a learner of it i'm i would never call myself that and that's just having respect for the chiefs of the couch and chibe and the elders um, which deserve their respect at this time really and just one last question for you how's that book coming along that you're going to write ah well i don't know if my grandmother's kicking me with this but um uh, me being dyslexic, I mean, the amount of times I've started this book, <laughs> it's going to be a while. For me, I want to do some things. That if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it the right way. I have written a lot out. It needs revising. I'll say when I get time, I'll revise it and look at it again and again. But you must be picking that up psychic, Trevor, because um, <laughs> you're not the first person that said that to me. <laughs> Jason, as you know, when we're working, we are working. Although I'm in an interview and right now my hands are on technical stuff, there is yeah. an attunement that happens. So I will be blunt and say, yes, while I was watching you, I have been watching you on screen. I do sense that there is a book coming out of you. I also sense long term and know that you're going to take your SNU stuff a whole lot further. I feel that in 20 years or under, you're going to be using a title that begins with M. So maybe work that one out. Well, you know, well, that sounds very, very good, uh, Trevor. And I must say, I feel, and this is a thing, it, we're all on a journey and we're all ambassadors of the spirit world, whether we're working as a medium or we're working within the Spiritualist National Union movement. But I feel as I walk along this journey, I seem to be getting closer to more and more resonance of who I am. And when we're walking on this journey of life, we're walking on the journey of self-discovery so I'm just going to see where the journey goes. I never look at the end destination. I just look at the step by step where I'm going. Um, and I enjoy every step I take along the way. And he looks into the side of his camera to see if that Ursula has just walked into the room. Well, I do must to say, she snuck in with a cup of tea <laughs> in the middle of my interview. Yes, but she needs to get some cooking oil on those door hinges. <laughs> Well, she's the, she's the mad Dutch woman I was telling you oh, about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking back my coffee. I thought I'd be nice and bring you a cup of coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're, we're, we're live, but it's okay. Are you? We'll keep this bit in, won't we? So if you want to pop your red onto the screen, Ursula, <laughs> just say hello. I've just been out for a walk. I look horrible. Oh, that's all <laughs> right. Here she is. Oh, wow. Oh, that's made the men happy. That's brilliant. It's lovely to see you. You're <laughs> so much nicer than Roos, I must say. <laughs> 
Rose well, Ro- Rose is going to feel very happy that you say, oh, so much better than Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm winding Rose up. I, I all, just, I can, uh, all, I can, all I can say, Trevor, is they're just as crazy. Yes. Does, I, while you're there, Ursula, <laughs> Ursula, while you're there, have you taught our Jason any good English words that he was unaware of beforehand? Have I taught Jason English words? Uh, yeah, some good English words. Because yes, Rose yes, taught me yes, a lot. Like, oh. let's try I'll try this one. When, we, when I met her in, in London, I, we, I used to call it vodka. What did you used to call it? Vodka. No, say that again. Vodka. Wod, vodka. 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 When I, when I was speaking to... Uh, Ursula will understand. When I was speaking to Rose a, a few weeks ago in her interview, I noted lots of words she was saying that we don't use. She said, um, yes, I'm a bit of a paintist. I like to do a lot of painting. So paintist is the new word that I've learned. Um, and then she said... Paintist, but I like the word. Yeah. And she said, and then I went and I had to stand in front of the examinator. And I thought, oh, that's a great word. That's so strong. It's better than an examiner, which we are, and we, what she meant. She said an examinator. And I, I thought... I said examinator as well, yeah. It's not it a makes word. more sense. It's not a word, <laughs> but, but it's a great word. So I learned all of this wonderful English from my new Dutch friend, Rose. So I just wondered if, Jason, you're having that privilege as well. Got any, got any words? Got any no, words? I haven't really taught you any. Well, we taught you the Dutch swearing words, but <laughs> it's not really good. <laughs> Yeah, no, that wouldn't be... Um, that, were, that were the first words he learned in Dutch. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. without my knowledge, of course, uh, Trevor. Yes. <laughs> well, it's lovely to see you, and I'm very glad that you've popped your head on screen. The other side of Jason, the person that keeps him somewhat grounded. So. Well, yeah, the nicest side of Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bye. So, thank, thank you, Ursula. It's good to meet you. I'll, I'll wait till she leaves, Clever, before we continue. <laughs> Squeaky door. <laughs> We're back on the interview. I tell you what, Jason, I have really, really enjoyed this. You are a mind of information, a treasure trove, and those people that live and work with you and those students, they are really, really blessed to have a great teacher. Oh, thank you, Trevor. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. And if you did live close by, you're welcome to come round for a cup of coffee. And I certainly would not mind sharing any knowledge that I have. It would be lovely to spend time with you. And whenever this situation changes and I come to England, well, why don't we meet up sometime? Absolutely. The Wigan is a wonderful place. It's twinned with Florida. I mean, it's really, really incredible here. Palm trees line the streets. It's just a remarkable place, Wigan. Honestly, you you, you are really missing out. Now oh, then, lovely. And Jason, as we round this up now, would you be able to leave our listener with an inspirational message of some sort? I think the biggest inspirational message at this time, Trevor, is to believe in yourself. And I think if everyone can believe in their self, in the, in, in the soul of who they are, in, in the spirit of who, who they are, no matter what's happened in your life or where you come from, I mean, we've talked about mine, you can come from nothing, but you can become something as long as you keep believing in yourself. And when you take your life step by step, just putting one foot in front of the other, just believing that you are in movement, you are in progression, you will get somewhere. Just having that little bit of belief is putting a light on inside of yourself. And when you believe in that, all these problems and things disappear and they become less of an influence in your life. And it's all about that changing it. Instead of the world having an influence on you, start to acknowledge and nourish yourself. And then you will start having an influence on the world. It's turning it around. And if you can do that, you'll be making somebody a very, a very giving somebody a very lovely day because you actually stepping into who you are, that beingness that has a resonance in itself and if you can believe in you then you show others how they can believe in themselves jason goldsworthy thank you very very much thank you thank you very much it was lovely being here trevor lovely meeting you thank you 
And that brings another episode of Spirited Talk to a close. A reminder that there are many ways you can support these podcasts into the future. Start right now by subscribing to this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to it on right now. You are also welcome to join our Facebook podcast community group where hundreds of listeners and the guests come together to be part of Spirited Talk. If you'd like to contribute financially from as little as £5 per month, you can become a partner and access exclusive content and know that you're helping to keep this valuable information source going into the future. You can find out more about this and much more on our website at spiritedtalkpodcast.com. A huge thank you to my partners and to my guests today. From me, Trevor, thank you again and goodbye. (music) 